Scrum is perhaps the best known and most widely used Agile methodology, and that methodology is documented in the Scrum Guide. So, what do you need to know about the Scrum Guide? One, the Scrum Guide is available to download for free at scrumguides.org. The official version is in English, but there are community translations into over 30 languages, and there are four different languages of audio version at the moment. Number two, the Scrum Guide is written by Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland. They are the co creators of Scrum and they currently run Scrum.org and Scrum Inc, respectively. Number three, the Scrum Guide is a short document, just 13 pages in the 2020 official English language version. It's written to be easy to read, and the document describes the Scrum framework as purposefully incomplete. That means that it only defines the core elements that we need to implement the Scrum methodology. The content is a guide to the kind of processes that we need to implement a lean and empirically led project. As a result, the guide leaves it to practitioners to find detailed ways to work within the framework. Number four, the Scrum Guide defines three roles. The first is the development team. This consists of the engineers who build the components of the final product or products. The development team is self-organizing and self-managing, and it's usually cross-functional, having all of the capabilities it needs to fulfill its task. The second role is that of product owner, whose focus is on the needs of the users, the customers, or other stakeholders. Their role is to understand what these stakeholders need and to turn it into specifications for the product that the development team will deliver. They document these specifications as user stories. The final role is the Scrum Master, whose primary focus is on the development team. The Scrum Master facilitates the Scrum process to make it work as effectively and efficiently as possible. The Scrum Master is the source of knowledge and advice on the Scrum process and the principal problem solver for the kind of managerial or process problems the team encounters. They also facilitate the Scrum events. Number five is the Scrum process, which I'm going to describe in five steps. The process starts with the product backlog which is an orderly list of all the things the development team needs to do to either improve or create new products. Based on the product backlog, the team commits to the product goal. The second step is sprint planning, which will initiate a sprint. Sprint is a single iteration of work that completes a number of units known as stories on the product backlog. The sprint is the primary event, kind of like the heartbeat of Scrum. The outcome of sprint planning is a sprint backlog, a selection from the product backlog which the team commits to for that sprint, and the team formally commits to the sprint goal. The third step is the sprint itself, the time box period within which the development team works on the sprint backlog. The time box is usually two weeks in length, although it can vary. During the sprint, the team will hold daily scrums, meetings in which they look at the progress towards the sprint goal. The fourth step is an event called the sprint review. At the end of the sprint, the development team exposes the work they've done to the scrutiny of the users. It's only when the users sign off and say the work is complete that the team can declare the sprint backlog to be done. Step five is an event called the sprint retrospective. After the sprint review, the team gets together without outsiders, customers, users, other stakeholders to review their own internal processes 
and consider how they can work more effectively during the next sprint. Number six, there are three Scrum artifacts. These are the product backlog, the sprint backlog, and the increment itself. Number seven, there are three Scrum commitments. These are the product goal, the sprint goal, and the definition of done, which sets out how we know that the increment has been done completely and to specification. Number eight, there are five Scrum events. These are sprint planning, the sprint, the daily Scrum, the sprint review, and the sprint retrospective. Number nine, the thinking that underpins all of Scrum are its bases, pillars, and values. Scrum is based on two important ideas, lean thinking and empiricism. Lean thinking is about focusing on what is essential and eliminating all waste. Empiricism is about favouring what we learn through observation of the real world rather than from rational thinking and theory. In Scrum, empiricism has three pillars. Transparency, inspection and adaptation. That is, we make what is happening transparent, we inspect what is going on and we adapt in response to what we find. Scrum also has five values, which are commitment, focus, openness, respect, and courage. Number 10 is Scrum certification, which isn't actually in the Scrum guide. The principal Scrum certifications are available from two organizations, the Scrum Alliance and Scrum.org. Each of them offers a range of certifications based on the different roles and at different levels. I'll put some links in the description to this video. So the Scrum Guide is indispensable reading for anyone wanting to work on a Scrum project or just to learn how they operate. It won't take you long, it's easy to read and it's filled with ideas. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. I'll be creating loads more great project management videos for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of them. And I'll see you in the next one.